So good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the 73rd monthly meeting of the Strong and Sustainable Business Model Group by and for our over 1,400 members around the world. Uh, good, everybody uh, has made it. Uh, we are recording today, and uh, so if you do, do not wish to be recorded, you should uh, leave at this point. Uh, my name is Anthony Elkwood, and I'm one of the co-founders of the group, and uh, you can find out more about me by Googling my name. Uh, and uh, what I'd like to do to start with is uh, quickly walk you through uh, a, a PowerPoint presentation um, to uh, for those of you who have not been at one of our meetings today. I'll do this very fast. This presentation will be in the uh, Google Drive folder uh, with the main presentation for today as well as the recording from today's meeting, uh, which will be there shortly after the meeting is over. So, uh, so we are exploring how to enable entrepreneurs and established businesses to realize enterprises that choose flourishing as their goal. Uh, and that's been the work of this group uh, of, and this community of innovation practice since 2012. And I'd like to start with an acknowledgement. Uh, this is something we've been doing in Canada as part of the reconciliation uh, process that we've had here with our First Nations. And uh, this has been updated to accommodate the fact that we actually have a global audience today. So this is sacred land where all of us are privileged uh, to be at this point in time. And this land, the nearby lakes and sea, has supported human beings for thousands of years of rich history, knowledge, and tradition. And we are privileged to be the beneficiaries and the stewards of all that has come before on behalf of the seven generations to come and beyond. And we invite you to consider in your place how you honor and respect the people's indigenous to your place, including, of course, for many of you yourselves. And today, each place around the world is increasingly a home for people from across the world. And we're each grateful to have the opportunity to be where we are today. So that's very much a social acknowledgement. We also like to recognize the place. Uh, so do you know what watershed you're in today? Uh, with the picture here is the building that we're in. We're not on the top part, we're down below. Uh, and uh, for us here in the room, we're sitting on a watershed known as Russell Creek, known by settlers, I think we should say Russell Creek. Uh, and we buried that as a sewer in the mid 1870s, um, <laughs> doing some research to try and figure out indigenous name or names, but uh, have been unable to locate that yet. So I look to be corrected at some point or informed. And the delivery of this session uh, is important on place uh, because if you use the bathroom just before you came in or as you leave, leave afterwards, uh, that sewer ultimately will connect to the watershed in which you are sitting. And of course, if you're using a tool like the Flourishing Business Canvas, which is built by a project of members of this group, uh, it gives you an opportunity to think about how your business is connected to the participal stocks and business services, which make up of something like a watershed. So we're over 1,400 people globally. Uh, we are the world's first, perhaps the world's only group taking action uh, to um, uh, taking action to uh, undertake enterprise strategy into the organizational design action research from a micro-ecological economic perspective. So many of you know the work of Kate Rayworth, she's probably the most prominent macro-ecological economist uh, around today, uh, so, although not the, the longest person in that, uh, with that title. Uh, but we're not focused on the big macro economy, we're focused down at the micro level, the organizational level and what we do. And we're also uh, perhaps the world that first only group looking to do enterprise strategy into the organizational design action research using systemic design approaches. So we're not only doing design thinking, we're not only doing system thinking, we're putting those two things together. And in that, we're part of a larger community uh, called the Systemic Design Network, which was co-founded by uh, people here at OCAD and also people at the Arho School of Architecture in Oslo. And their meeting actually is next, next week in uh, Turin. So, uh, and we've also got a strong normative purpose. Our very explicit goal is to enable flourishing. And we get you. We get the people who are trying to do this work. And so our members put into practice natural research the latest ideas. Uh, if you're here at OCAD, then the OCAD uh, Masters of Design and Strategic Foresight and Innovation students. We're putting into practice what these students are learning and what we're offering to our members as a global network of possibilities for your education, your research, employment, your business, uh, you, you could go on. Um, I won't go through the goals in any detail here, but it's suffice to say that we have five streams of uh, research and practice which are on our wiki, which is uh, linked to the bottom of the screen here. We're part of a glowing, growing planetary movement and we've thrown up a few logos here of other people see ourselves to be affiliated with or connected to uh, directly or uh, philosophically. Uh, and we're in sync and going beyond the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 
Uh, so very much uh, supportive of the UN SDGs. They're an amazing uh, gift to us, uh, ourselves as a species from ourselves. Uh, but the SDGs have certain challenges uh, and we are seeking to go beyond them towards uh, flourishing. Uh, we have multiple collaborative projects with our members, which I won't go through uh, at the moment. Uh, but again, you'll find more details of those on the, on the wiki. Uh, and uh, we are also connecting up communities uh, around the world. Uh, and I just listed a few here uh, that we're connected to. And uh, yeah, we hope that you as members also get connected to these uh, communities as well. I uh, won't go through that. Uh, there's some new projects that we're trying to get started. Uh, if you're interested, there's more details on the wiki. Uh, and our monthly meetings, such as this one, are for sharing, uh, which uh, we've been doing since 2012. And uh, we're looking for more graduate students to get engaged in projects uh, to do their graduate research around things that we're interested in. Uh, we have a list of ideas if you're a graduate student or you're supervising graduate students of, of things where our members have said we're interested in helping graduate students do research. Uh, and uh, if you're a graduate student and you're wondering why you should engage with us, then uh, it, there's an opportunity for you to uh, engage with a world leading friendly expert community uh, from various different perspectives. Uh, we do need help. Uh, we're looking for volunteers, uh, and uh, it's a great opportunity to get to know uh, what's going on in this community. And uh, I'll skip over that to announce very quickly that we have uh, two uh, people who have volunteered, both uh, had foresight and innovation students. Uh, you can reach them at animators at sspmd.com. We'll improve this slide next month with some photos and uh, other things up here. Uh, the first is Nicole Doris. Uh, Nicole is sitting here to my right. Let me see if I can get her on the screen here. All right, she's doing the camera. Nicole, would you like to just say a few words of hello? Can you say hello, Nicole? There's yeah. Mary's Nicole right here sitting next to me. Yeah. Um, hi everybody, I'm Nicole, I'm a graduate in the SFI program, so that's Strategic Foresight and Innovation. And in my second year, uh, when I'm not doing that, which is all the time, uh, I actually uh, am an innovation facilitator uh, at Georgian College, which is a, uh, a Canadian college just north of Toronto, about an hour. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that Georgian is the first Canadian college that has received the Ashoka Chink. Um, so yeah, really excited to be here and uh, um, did a independent study in the summer on how to develop an action research framework for the flourishing students on campus. So have fallen in love with this concept. So really looking forward to meeting you all. So there you go. So uh, with, with that, I'm going to hand over to Bill. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I'm hand over to Bill. Uh, Bill Craig is um, has been involved in this group uh, since uh, the very early days. Uh, and uh, about a year ago, he became president and board chair of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the positive psychologists are the ones who understand that the mind is actually embedded in something bigger than just the skull. It's actually in, a, in an environment. And they're also very interested in thinking about what, how we can be well psychologically, not just diagnosing ill. Some of you probably know the typical psychological uh, 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 manual of, of diagnoses, which are absolutely normal. So the positive psychologists are asking, how can we be well? What is a fully well human being? And they're the ones who actually first use the word flourishing to describe a fully well human being. Uh, and so with that, Bill, uh, I will stop sharing and you can okay. uh, take over. <laughs> Okay, is that uh, good for sharing? Yes, that, that is. And uh, uh, if people want to ask questions, Bill, do you want them to in try to interrupt you? Or, or uh, just jump right in. This is sort of a, uh, yeah, you can definitely interrupt if you have questions and then uh, uh, I'll uh, answer them to the best of my ability. As I mentioned, uh, I've been sort of out of commission for the last three weeks, so uh, uh, I am I'm drug supported today, so hopefully uh, if we get to any questions, will be uh, Appropriate answers. So it's uh, uh, the uh, the uh, I guess first of all, from uh, just add on to your acknowledgments, I'm in uh, I'm in Edmonton and I'm in Treaty Six in the North Saskatchewan watershed. So it's uh, I just did that because uh, Anthony knows my feeling about announcing all of that that information. So it's 
thought I, I thought what I, I would uh, add that in. Okay, so the uh, topic of today is the role of positive psychology in flourishing uh, business design. So, uh, as Anthony mentioned, I'm the uh, president, the current, the current president of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association. I also have a small company that I uh, that has worked with. Uh, uh, with this group over the years under various names, but it's now called uh, Bizmundi, which is uh, our tagline is building oh. large enterprises. So, uh, you know, the purpose of that company is really around, uh, uh, I won't get into a lot of the details, but it's just around uh, integrating positive psychology with organizational design uh, with a focus on uh, building flourishing enterprises. That's really what, what it's all about. So the... Uh, We get my keyboard to work. Here we go. Uh, it's a really uh, exhaustive agenda for today, so uh, I'm not going to be able to talk about all of this stuff. So it's, uh, but I, uh, I, I wanted to have it there so you can sort of see the direction that I'm going. Uh, just a little bit about the purpose of the presentation in a minute. Some contributing ideas. Uh, about, talk a little bit about positive psychology and what I call POSX org, which is a new term. It's it's a Biz Monday, Bill Craig original term. So I'll, I'll get into that in a few minutes. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about flourishing and uh, a lot of the typical messages that uh, that uh, uh, Anthony and uh, Claire would be giving from a flourishing point of view. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about flourishing business design. But again, that would be more, uh, I'm sure Anthony could do a lot better job of talking about this than I could. Uh, the uh, And then we'll talk a little bit about the science of uh, POSX org. And, uh, uh, get in, get into that. That's that's really around uh, the science behind uh, the integration of positive psychology with organizational design. Um, and then uh, just take a quick look at positive psychology at work. Content in this. Um, I'm getting a your internet connection is unstable, so hopefully I'll be I'll be good. The uh, Bill. The, the yeah. Is could you? Um, uh, See if you can just turn the level down on your mic very slightly. You're okay. You're topping out. Should be able to do it from the mic down at the bottom left corner of the screen. Yeah. Interesting. You can. Is that okay, how do you find that now? That's much better, thank you. And uh, for those of you not speaking, if you could mute yourself, that would be great. Say that again. I'm just uh, a reminder to everybody who's not speaking if you could mute. Oh, okay. So my, my volume's okay now? Yeah, that's much better. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm. okay. Um, so that's uh, a huge agenda. Uh, I'll just I'll really just touch on some of the areas from here. Uh, the, uh, so the purpose of the talk today is I just want to start with uh, start to think about the integration of positive psychology into organizational design and flourishing business design. So there's a lot of, there's a, this is a huge area uh, to get into. So it's, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, thinking and discussion and really this is kind of like a kickoff for some of that, uh, some of that thinking and discussion. Uh, you know, I've been working with a few uh, researchers on developing the ideas, uh, but uh, you know, we, we really haven't talked to uh, too many other people about it. So. Uh, this is really sort of starting to, to uh, bring it out into the, the open uh, right now. Uh, recognize the need to take the human dimension must, much more seriously in organizational design and, and uh, flourishing business design. So, you know, it's, it's a, we're getting that message in a lot from a lot of people now, but it's, uh, you know, it really hasn't been uh, stated concretely uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the importance of the human dimension, uh, uh, human capital and social capital, uh, uh, to the side of the business as well. Uh, start to think about a taxonomy of positive psychology, and I should say positive psychology and organizational design concepts, practices, interventions, and assessments. In order to sort of, uh, you know, we have to build this sort of taxonomy uh, of uh, concepts and terms and uh, uh, practices, uh, interventions, and assessment tools, uh, because you know, a positive psychology feeds in, can feed into so many, so it's the antecedents of so many things within organizational design. Um, and so we almost need a bit of a formal, a formal language to sort of move forward on that. Um, 
And then also uh, to start to think about the linkages of positive psychology concepts, research practices and interventions in organizational design and flourishing business design. So once we have that uh, sort of taxonomy, vocabulary, uh, idea of the, um, uh, then, then we need to, to sort of do more of a meta-analysis, more research and uh, practical application, execution and analysis of the results from that to build a bit of a logic model that captures all the linkages. So, uh, you know, that's, if, 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 uh, if this wasn't so huge, that's what I would have liked to have talked about today is all those linkages. So uh, all I can really do is sort of hint at some of those linkages now, so that uh, that'll be today. Uh, the, uh, this, and this presentation is really just laying a small amount of the required foundation on the topic. So it's, uh, you know, we have a long, uh, a long way to go uh, on this. And it's of interest to me from a business point of view, but it's also of interest for me from moving forward in, uh, you know, the, moving the field and the research and the practitioner, practitioners' uh, activities in positive psychology from the association perspective as well. So there's a lot of uh, inputs that go into this. Uh, grateful for all, for all the work, uh, great, uh, great work done in positive psychology, organizational design, you know, appreciative inquiry and positive change management, uh, sustainability, business modeling and business architecture, all the various thinking models. Uh, I, have, I have a sort of a mind map of thinking models that, that I, I, I controlled myself when I wrote down the thinking models for today. So it's really stuck with systems thinking and the whole of system thinking, design thinking. Um, I also, a, a term that I'm trying to coin is uh, for the world thinking. Uh, so that's sort of, uh, uh, I, I've talked to, uh, actually I had a, well, quite a while ago, I had a brief discussion with uh, David Cooper Ryder and Ron Fry about uh, sort of using that terminology. There seemed to be a little bit of interest there as well. Uh, the um, Agile and Lean, certainly all the canvas work from the flourishing business canvas, the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas, and a gazillion other types of canvases, uh, whether they're legit canvases or not. Uh, uh, and then just really the, the multidisciplinary views of happiness, quality of life, well being, and flourishing. You know, um, I, I would like to say that, uh, that um, you know, positive psychology was really the one that sort of uh, started coming up with a lot of these terms, but uh, uh, in a way, uh, some of the economists actually beat us to the punch on, on some of these as well. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it all, it's all kind of merged together now, and, uh, uh, but certainly from a well-being and flourishing, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, some of the discussions were, uh, certainly came from the economics field and, and, very, and a few other fields as well. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Bill, is, I'm correct in saying that Paul Roma, the uh, economist, just one of the two economists who just won the Nobel Prize this year, uh, for his work on climate change. He'd actually been doing quite a lot of work with Paul Layard. Uh, I think it's one of the London universities uh, about 15 or 20 years ago on the economics of happiness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he was involved in, in editing various things around, around that. So uh, yeah, the, the, the ecological economists and even some mainstream ones have been kind of interested in. Yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been really a lot of fields now, that, you know, and then the work from an organizational design eventually uh, and then, you know, so from that side of the world sort of has, has done a good job at moving those forward as well. Certainly the flourishing word, you know, we're very familiar with the work that uh, David Cooper is doing on, on, that, on that side and uh, a lot of the work that uh, I guess Claire's involved with too uh, is, uh, is uh, related to that as well. So that, you know, those, uh, it, it comes from a lot of different fields and if you, if you ever tried to sort of source, you know, the original source of it, uh, it'd be a tough, uh, tough to do, but in the end, it's all good. It's moving forward, and we've got some pretty solid definitions now. And the other area that uh, you know, when you start looking at positive psychology uh, integration with organizational design, you start to appreciate the uh, the amount of uh, uh, of uh, contribution and application within human resources and human resource information management. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, I think as as you get going in this area. And we start to come up with you know more precise models and methods and you know um, uh, logic models for supporting how positive psychology can, can contribute to uh, to the success of uh, enterprises and businesses and uh, and uh, the community. Then uh, you know I think the a lot of that will be happening from a, a human resources side. So I wanted to give, uh, give one slide that I could introduce uh, uh, some concepts of positive psychology. So it's, uh, 
because I've got way too many slides. <laughs> and uh, so really, uh, I'll just go with this, uh, this definition for now. And, and there's a lot of definitions, but it's a scientific study of optimal human functioning that allows individuals, teams, communities, and organizations to flourish. And we'll get into flourish in a little bit. Uh, the key point is a scientific study. So it's you know, te technically a lot of the, the content from positive psychology should be research-based. Uh, the practitioners should be uh, doing whatever they're doing based on what the, the research has. Uh, the practitioners can obviously move, move the research forward as well and get feedback to uh, back to the researchers so that uh, the uh, research uh, strategies uh, can, uh, can be altered to sort of uh, uh, based on experience from practitioners as well. Uh, the, uh, you know, we, we constantly promote that it's a science-based field. However, uh, the, uh, having said that, and I'd like to be you know, positive about positive psychology, there is a negative side to positive psychology as well. In that, uh, it's only been around for 20 uh, something years. And uh, you know, if really the, you look at the field itself, it's really uh, 1999 when Martin Sullivan became the president of the, of the American Psychology Association that uh, he coined this fray, uh, the, fray, the, the subfield of positive psychology. And he did that because he did a study and, uh, of all the research done to date within the psychology field. And I can't remember the exact number, but I think it's like 97 or 98.5% of the literature in, in, in positive, sorry, in psychology was based on illness. It, it wasn't based on uh, uh, the uh, more of the positive psychology side, which is on sort of uh, how to live the good life. And uh, uh, the, uh, and I'm not going to define that because we could spend days defining what good life means as well. So it's uh, uh, the, uh, however, uh, I did uh, just stick a mind map on this slide to sort of illustrate some of the areas of positive psychology. Uh, it's far from complete, but it gives you a, it's a pretty broad based field. It covers a lot of areas. Uh, you know, Seligman uh, later on in subsequent work, Seligman uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, in the way he defined the, uh, uh, um, Flourishing as as being that uh, that perma uh, that diagram the diagram in the, the middle of the slide, uh, and uh, from an individual point of view, that uh, there was uh, what contributed to flourishing for an individual and ultimately to their their well being was the, uh, that there was uh, you had to look at positive emotions, engagement, uh, relationships, uh, meaning and purpose, uh, achieve and achievement. Uh, later on, there was a, in 2015, there was a, a desire to add another, another attribute or, or letter to the acronym, which is B for vitality, which is more around uh, health and fitness and nutrition and uh, uh, a little bit around uh, uh, meditation, mindfulness, things like that. Uh, so there, there, it's, uh, we, we typically, in Canada, we would use the PERMA V, a PERMA dash V, it's uh, it's in the states a little bit as well, but it's not. I don't. It's not fully accepted. And if you go to Australia, they use perma dash H for health uh, instead. So it's uh, uh, so uh, typically in positive psychology, the uh, you know you, you look at the illness and well, wellness continuum. You know uh, uh, the past history of psychology was very focused on the uh, on the illness side of the continuum, and uh, you know dealing with uh, dealing with disability and, and you know and uh, uh, the sort of all the all the illness related uh, side of the wellness uh, uh, para paradigm and uh, and then uh, positive psychology really focused on the on the wellness side of, of that continuum so you know we, when we're talking today we uh, you know a lot of it will be positive this positive that uh, but we do recognize that not everything is positive and there's a lot of there's a lot of power power and uh, I don't know if power is the right word but there's a lot of motivation that uh, that uh, uh, the, the negative can, can provide people as well. Uh, you know, even though we, we tend, uh, you know, we tend to put a positive reframing on everything uh, in, in, our, in our field, uh, we don't ignore the, the, the illness side. A good example would be stress. You know, used, stress used to be considered really evil and uh, now there's actually a positive side to stress. That it's a stress, stress can act as a, motiv a motivator and things like that. So uh, um, I'll just leave it at that, but this slide, uh, um, just want to make sure I cover the second point. Positive psychology is a science of positive aspects of human life, such as happiness, well-being, well and flourishing. But anyway, I didn't want to spend a bunch of time on this one, but uh, that, that should be sufficient to give an idea of positive psychology. 
Now, this is, uh, this is again, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Craig, sort of Bismundi original thoughts that I use. Uh, uh, so nothing, uh, uh, don't write this down as, as, as gospel or <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, my, my bizarre way of thinking. So it's, uh, so I, I call, I, I, I've tried to label, get a, get a label to sort of uh, everything that I could think about from work, uh, integrating positive psychology and organization design. So I came up with this POSX org uh, sort of uh, label, and it, it comes from two sort of two ideas. One is just the integration of the two, so it's sort of positive psychology and or times organizational design, that sort of idea. The other one is that uh, X could act like a variable, so um, it's positive something for organizations and enterprises. And so, in, in, in for, for my way of thinking, these are the ones I've identified sort of so far. There's, I'm sure there's more, but uh, uh, when I'm thinking in terms of integrating positive psychology and organizational design, I'm thinking about a positive culture. I'm thinking about positive leadership, uh, positive teams, positive individuals or employees, uh, a positive workplace. I could add a positive organization on, onto the end of that as well. And uh, positive change. Uh, typically, I'm, I, you know, I'm a big believer in, the, uh, in David Cooperator's work on the new, new change equation and all of that. So. Uh, uh, like his methodologies for positive change, uh, the uh, positive innovation. That's I've done some work with uh, a uh, a research group in Toronto on exploring uh, uh, how positive psychology can be used to support uh, the innovation process within organizations. So if if there's time, I'll talk a little bit about that and uh, sort of uh, what are the sort of the inputs from positive psychology that can be applied at the individual team and organizational level from an innovation uh, point of view. Uh, there's other, other things like positive, positive energy. Uh, uh, I'm sure I could just you know, pick any business word and stick the word positive in front of it. And, uh, so that's the, that's the origin of, of positive XORG for, for, for me. Now, uh, for positive XORG, I also like to look at the context and linkages. And, and this really comes out in a lot of, you know, this is, uh, this is stuff that I've thought about for years, but it's, it's stuff that other people have thought about for years as well. So I, you know, I've, I've met with lots of people that sort of, uh, sort of bring all these, uh, this idea, uh, this context and linkages together. So uh, uh, you know what, you can apply the concepts, practices, uh, and act, uh, acts, uh, the contents and practices of positive psychology and asset, context, practices, and assessment, I should uh, read at all contexts uh, from, uh, uh, so from a positive psychology view, you can, the concepts, practices, and assessment tools that are available, you can apply it all of these contexts. So it's, uh, you know, we typically start at the individual level. Positive psychology has very, been very focused over the years on the individual. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I think uh, it quickly got into organizations through the work of uh, Kim Cameron and uh, Jane Dutton and uh, Robert Quinn. Um, the, uh, I'm just thinking, they were all University of Michigan, I think. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, so it quickly got into the, the business side. The, 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 I think it was called Positive Institutions uh, initially. And then uh, I'll, I'll get into a couple slides from now, talk about uh, some of the, uh, the areas that they, they got into uh, from the business side as well. But you can apply it to households, groups, and teams, to workplaces. I sort of separate workplaces from organizations and institutions because workplaces can be very different from a uh, uh, a geography a point of view, or even within the same geography, they can be really, really different as well. It, it really depends on the people at workplaces as, as well. Uh, organizations and institutions, I, I, I always separate out enterprise from organizations and institutions. The enterprise to me is, uh, is much broader. It sort of includes everything. It, it, it includes uh, uh, sort of all, all of your stakeholders, your clients, your, uh, your partners, your employees, your uh, uh, community that you're, you're within. Uh, your governors, uh, your suppliers. That's that's when when I think of enterprise. That's what I think of. Um, I know part of our uh, part of our discussion with the flourishing flourishing business canvas is whether it should be called that or should be called the flourishing enterprise canvas uh, now uh, as well. So it's I'll be, uh, yeah, we've had lots of discussions. We haven't uh, resolved it uh, as. To be. Uh, then also the community context, uh, you know, everything that we're doing from an uh, organization point of view now is, is uh, you know, we're, we're starting to consider the, the larger community. 
uh, that, that we're in or the, even the city. The, uh, typically, I just, I, where I have city, region, state, uh, province, and country, I typically just put the word region there to cover all of those and then uh, the world itself. So this, you know, this uh, context is, uh, is really, everyone's talking sort of in, in these contexts now and positive psychology can be applied in all these contexts. Uh, the thing I wanted to illustrate is these relationship lines between uh, all of these as well, is that uh, the benefits of, of do, applying positive psychology in one context can be amplified uh, at the other context levels as well. So it's, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you focus on uh, positive emotion uh, and various other things that, that improve employee, uh, employee engagement, then you can, you can definitely have an impact or an amplification on uh, the flourishing, amount of flourishing and well-being occurring within the enterprise, the organization, or the community, or, or, or the world, uh, for that matter. So it's, uh, they're all sort of uh, interconnected and uh, uh, an action or an intervention applied in one can certainly have benefit to, uh, to the others and sometimes can be amplified. Um, from a positive psychology and organizational design perspective, I'm sorry about the spelling mistake, we need to uh, uh, define pathways or logical model linking the concepts, the research and practices to achieve desired outcomes at all levels of flourishing and maximize the context amplifier effect. So it's, uh, that's, uh, that's really what I'm interested in getting to is uh, you know, having this sort of taxonomy and logic model that links you know, very low level positive psychology concepts and uh, practices, interventions and, and, uh, and research to the, the more the higher level business uh, sort of goals uh, as well. The, uh, I'm going to uh, I'll quickly go over this. Uh, why organizations should focus on this approach. So you know, there's all the tra traditional, all the traditional things around profitability and better organizational outcomes and productivity and performance and enterprise resilience, uh, uh, enhanced competitiveness, uh, uh, enterprise alignment you know, from the whole system or society viewpoint or all the, uh, the potential sort of stakeholders, whether it's clients, employees, partners, suppliers, uh, communities, cities, et cetera. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, you know, enterprise flourishing and well-being. That's what we're talking about a lot today. And uh, so that's why, uh, that's, you know, that's part of the, the why we need to start looking at this and why individuals and teams need to look at uh, this approach is just to be more engaged, to be more motivated, to be more productive, healthier, uh, more loyal, more effective in teams, more creative and innovative, uh, have more energy in what you're doing, uh, better relationships uh, between customers and employees and staff and uh, uh, reduce absenteeism, more resilience. Again, this is a list that can go on forever. So it's, uh, uh, I just wanted to sort of summarize sort of, uh, this is where my thinking went originally when I started looking at positive psychology and, uh, and organizational design. Uh, Bill, it's, it's worth noting, of course, that our member Bob Willard uh, has been working on the quantification of these types of things uh, in a business case tool. So the sustainability ROI workbook is, if, if you're curious to try and turn these into dollars and cents that a CFO might be interested in understanding and, and therefore supporting initiatives around yeah, these things, fine. Bob's tool is a, is a great option. And I have it, so I, will, uh, I should have looked at it. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, I'll, uh, yeah, excellent point. And then I'll talk a little bit about measurement as well, uh, but not so much. Uh, you know, my, my work in measurement has been more at the well-being, quality of life and happiness side. So it's, it hasn't been at the, hasn't really been, been at the sort of the, the larger sort of scale flourishing. And, and uh, um, although I have done a lot of work in business in sort of uh, business measurement as well, so it's uh, in business analytics. Okay, good point. Uh, I'll even modify my version of the presentation to include that. I should have mentioned if you've got any sort of comments, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be questions. Uh, I want to capture these ideas. So like, like I said, we're, just, we're really just getting started with this. So it's, uh, please feel free to jump in uh, with uh, sort of uh, uh, new ideas and I'll, I'll let you know if I talk about it later in the presentation or uh, well, I'll definitely capture the notes. Plus it'll be on video. So the needs of the organization uh, just sort of continued on this, create and maintain a desirable and positive workplace for all organization stakeholders, be a respectful workplace with a, health, a healthy reputation. I kind of like, you know, when you read about positive organizations and when you go into an organization that, that is actually uh, 
uh, sort of a, applying positive psychology and uh, a few other areas within the organization, you can feel it. You know, you, you, when you go in the organization, I've only worked in one company in my life that where, where I, when I walked in the building, you knew that this, this place was a, a positive workplace. Uh, they respected you. They, they, were, they wanted you to grow. They, uh, uh, you know, they, they wanted you to be fully engaged and contribute and all of that. And it was just a wonderful experience. I don't know how many, how many else uh, have had that experience, but it's, uh, uh, you know, I haven't seen it too often. And, uh, and that's really been a motivator for me to sort of go down this path to figure out how, uh, you know, how do you go about uh, uh, creating those types of environments. And that's really, you know, what I'm suggesting with positive psychology and organizational design within a flourishing business uh, design is how do you actually create those environments, uh, you know, to, to do that. To, uh, and, and then also do that from a whole system perspective as well. So uh, I think I've talked about some of these already, so I'll, I'll uh, see if there's any key ones I wanna mention. Uh, oh, I guess the big one to mention is the psychological safety. So uh, on the right-hand side, a psychological safe work environment, uh, freedom from fear, reprisal, and bullying. That's a pretty hot topic right now and, and how do you actually create an environment uh, um, uh, uh, like that, and especially when you look at the, the innovation space and how, how does positive psychology actually contribute to, uh, uh, to, uh, to innovation and uh, uh, sort of introducing the idea of positive innovation, then uh, psychological safety is, is a key piece of that. Um, uh, relationships is another one we'll talk a little bit later. Certainly a powerful organization culture, a positive culture, I would call. And a learning organization with a growth mindset. Uh, uh, Claire, I, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to talk about this, but uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I, I love when David Cooperwriter talks about uh, uh, global learning in his, in his presentation. And, and uh, you know, for years we have, uh, uh, you know, we have, we have our, our learning model has been trial and error. And, and uh, you know, we, we look for godlike figures to give us answers, but there are no godlike figures to give us answers. And uh, so we've just been going from trial and error. And David, David Cooperwriter talks about this uh, from the, the idea of a global learning perspective. And then he talks about uh, aim to flourish. And uh, so he talks about uh, business as an agent for world benefit first. And then he talks about aim to flourish and what, to, what you guys are doing with aim to flourish to sort of uh, take this new approach to learning, which is to, to learn from, uh, uh, stories uh, of applying, uh, you know, a, a lot of these uh, concepts and approaches uh, to uh, to uh, organizations all over the world. Uh, and a lot of them, a lot of the stories are written by students as well. Did you want to add anything to that, Claire? Uh, no, not today. But just to say thank you, and I'm putting some links in the chat. Okay, great. It's really been a pet peeve for me that uh, you know the. Um, there was a great TED talk about six to eight years ago. On it, it talked about uh, you know this this idea of uh, we're still just learning. Uh, we're learning. Uh, uh, I, they we're learning from uh, uh, just through trial and error still. And I think I think this this uh, concept of global learning and the work uh, that uh, you know businesses, agents of world benefit, and uh, and uh, aim to flourish is really getting us start to think more of uh, there's a a better way of learning uh, and, and if we do it at a global level you know then uh, it, it, it just it you know it, it's basically you're learning from so many other people and it's and, you know there's still the trial and error basis in some of it but you're, you're actually you're, you're learning from experience it's like you know it, it's uh, uh, which instead of you know just sort of going forward and uh, trying something out see if it works it's, uh, uh, it's a great great movement but I just wanted to mention that in case I missed it later and since Claire was here. Yeah. The uh, other, other needs I haven't talked about, a trusting organization, so positive change experiences, improved and quicker evidence-based decisions, optimal use, optimal use of resource, resources and assets, optimal work-life balance. Uh, I don't use the word balance, that's why I stuck the word integration there. I, I believe in work-life integration, not uh, work-life balance. Uh, it's, uh, you struggle too much with work-life life balance, so I uh, I, uh, I like to integrate them so that they're both uh, they both work together. Improved transparency, uh, the right human human capital with the right attitude and strengths and talents and skills, increased job satisfaction, 
uh, meet basic psychological needs as far as autonomy and confidence and relatedness, improve loyalty. You can see a lot of these ones I'm getting into now are where positive psychology concepts can actually start to uh, support these ones uh, uh, quite well. Um, the, uh, and then you know, a strong one is a contribution to community in the region. We're seeing that in a lot of the work all over the world now. Feel connected to the self, others, and community in the environment. So I'll just leave it at that because um, no. So, but still, a couple of questions from the chat. Um, sure. Maybe, just, maybe uh, so Andine was just asking about uh, if you could give us some examples of organizations where you, you, you feel that they're starting to apply some of this thinking. I think that was your question, right, Andy? Yeah, well, certainly. I, I, I uh, you know, I always pick on Pricewater, uh, sorry, on uh, yeah, Pricewaterhouse Coopers and in Australia, just because, I, because I've, I've met uh, Michelle McQuaid, who's very, uh, uh, you know, she's very active and vocal in the positive psychology world. And I just want to make sure I got the right company. I think that's the one. And then uh, the, uh, so certainly uh, there's a, a lot of examples there. The, um, um, I should, uh, I've, got, I've got a list. Uh, I haven't looked at it for quite a while, but uh, I'll, maybe what I'll do is I'll tack it into the, uh, uh, the spreadsheet is so, uh, I've, I've looked at sort of uh, the various areas of positive psychology that have been applied to improve certain things within enterprises and businesses. And so it's got the company name, it's got the sort of the area of focus that they had, uh, the interventions that they they introduced. So if it's okay, uh, Dean, can I can I? I'll just get that. I'll send that out to uh, to everybody to participate. On me, you're on mute. Or you can just type a reply. Sorry, yes. Um, I was also interested in like how, like where do you even start? Like how are these organizations, okay. like how are they applying? Also, no, yes. <laughs> so they, so I'm just, I'm getting uh, unstable internet. Okay, I'm back. So I just want to talk a little bit about flourishing or sustainability as flourishing first and uh, you know, really, uh, uh, Anthony, Anthony, I'm sure you could talk about this a lot better than I could. So it's, uh, uh, feel free to jump in whenever you'd like. But uh, I, uh, I also, uh, what I wanted to do in the slides was uh, I wanted to uh, um, uh, put as many pictures of the of references that I've sort of looked at, uh, you know, in, in over the years that are, that I felt were important as well. So it's, uh, so you'll see that on a, quite a few of the slides. So uh, sustainability as, uh, as flourishing, so sustainability is the possibility that humans and other life will flourish on the earth forever. I'm sure, uh, uh, Anthony, you could augment this definition quite a bit. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of focus on the bold areas within this slide. So it's, uh, so there's really two, two levels that uh, they talk about is the individual and the system and, and uh, 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 moving from having to being or state of quote, the individual. Uh, and then uh, uh, let's leave it at that. So flourishing as a flourishing as a workable metaphor for the bundle of things that make life worth living and produce uh, produce well-being. I kind of like that way of saying it. Uh, it's been it's expanded a little bit more in this reference. It's flourishing as a metaphor that captures happiness, health, and the many characteristics of what makes human humans believe in a good life, and it captures the sense of health of the natural world. So you know when. When you see those key ideas and, and you, you know, for the, for the first time, you start to appreciate, you know, the, the larger picture sort of flourishing and, and well, you can see, you can start to appreciate it in all con different contexts as well. Uh, there's a real sense of completeness. Flourishing is the result of acting out of care for oneself and other human beings, uh, the rest of the real, of the real material world and, and, all, and also for the out, out of the world, uh, the spiritual side as well. Uh, I don't have a lot that I can add to that, but uh, there's a couple of good references uh, that uh, talk about that, including this one. And sustainability means nothing without the end in sight, uh, which is really a state of flourishing. So I, you know, in my role as president of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be promoting the, uh, the field of positive psychology and, uh, uh, you know, supporting our members, you know, uh, uh, researchers and practitioners. I had to do at the last conference. I talked a little bit about my, about my vision for the future of the association and for uh, for the association. And uh, 
And you know, I said we've got to be a lot broader than just researchers and practitioners. We need, you know, we, we need Canadian Canadians to be involved in this as well. We need all levels of government. We need business to be uh, business to be involved, and uh, you know, non-governmental organizations as well. So it's uh, and really, it's 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 our, our vision to, is you know, obviously we're focused on the field of positive psychology, but really, our ultimate vision is the, is Canadian well-being. Uh, in the case of the Canadian Positive Psychology Association. So it's uh, uh, not to exclude Ameri American well-being, uh, Claire says. <laughs> I, I think, uh, Bill, the, the, only, the only thing I would add to, to this, uh, other than to recommend the book um, it, that's on the screen, uh, this is uh, John Ehrenfeld and Andrew Hoffman's uh, excellent book. It's a very short book. It's uh, under 100 pages, and it's a, it's a discussion between the two of them um, uh, about all of these topics that Bill's just listed. So it's a, it's a really nice short introduction if you kind of wrap your head around what this is all about. I think the key thing for me that, that got me uh, really uh, keen on the idea was when I started to realize that you get to define flourishing for yourself. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that your worldview, your values help you define for yourself. Now, obviously, there's a lot of physiological and psychological science that you can lean on as you define what, you, what flourishing means for you, and the positive psychologists and the ecological psychologists would be, would be good places to go to learn that. But you can basically build your own definition. And so in, a, in our world today, where there are so many different perspectives on everything, the idea that there could be a unifying idea that is both unifying and unique to everybody uh, got me really interested in the power of this, of this idea. Uh, excellent point. I, uh, um... It is, it, it is a quick read, though, the book. And, well, let me rephrase that. It's, it's deep concepts, but a quick read. <laughs> so, so, so you do have to think about it uh, when you go through this book. Uh, the, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, there's a few slides I'm going to skip over. Uh, they'll be in the, with the slide deck that gets uh, presented. Uh, I was trying to link the work that, uh, uh, that uh, Anthony has done uh, with uh, Stephen Davies as well. So uh, uh, in, 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 they've got a has the paper out? Is the paper out yet, uh, Sorry, which one? Uh, your uh, your design method paper. Uh, no, the book chapter is is um, uh, it, the book chapter on the design method will be uh, released as soon as the uh, Springer website for the book in which the chapter is going to appear will be published. And then we so we've Okay, I take it it will be. From, your book, from your from your book chapter. Uh, so it's. Uh, um, I won't talk too much about the flourishing imperative, but uh, you know it's really, uh, uh, or you know, again, the key points are in bold for me: sustaining the possibility for human and other life to flourish on our planet for seven generations and beyond. Organizations have a critical role in helping us meet our individual and collective needs. So, really, from the high level of human potential or flourishing, um, the best approach for each of us, all of us, and all other life to, to have the possibility for flourishing is. Also, the best inner why for any organization. I kind of love that, uh, you know, that uh, Simon Sinek sort of uh, view of uh, view of things for, uh, for flourishing as well. And the best inner why an enterprise can adopt because it creates multiple positive whys relevant to all stakeholders, not just customers. So it's uh, um, and you know the, the these message. The, you know, I, I put these in here and I, I bold that these are very strong messages and getting getting us to sort of that bigger picture world bigger picture view that, uh, you know, I think some of us have had, some of us have, have had, and certainly, you know, I, I look at uh, the work of David Cooperwriter, and, you know, and, you know, he's had that view for a while uh, as, as well, so it's, uh, um, but it's, it's nicely coming together under this flourishing imperative. Uh, another good reference is the Flourishing Enterprise uh, uh, book as well. I, I won't go uh, into that. Uh, actually, Dave Kubrater writes a good uh, afterwards for that book, which is a good, a good summary. And I, I really like this. Uh, again, I'm getting a little bit beyond where I need to talk about today, but uh, I like this diagram as sort of how we've how we've sort of evolved into where we are from a sustainable world point of view. So you know, initially with hunter gatherers, and we're in harmony with nature, and we're res resilient, and then we went to became an agrarian and had more complex tools and, and, and we started to sort of have an emergence of environmental problems, just the start of it. It was sort of the ignorance of any of these consequences. Uh, and then, you know, this uh, eventually getting to the industrial age where we had environmental deterioration and sort of the, uh, 
uh, and, and awareness and denial. I think we're still, a lot of us, a lot of the world is still in awareness and denial. So it's, uh, uh, even though we've, we've moved to the, the information age now, and we're starting to see more of environmental collapse and the you know, consequences observed and, uh, and you know, starting to get some simple solution failures. So we, you know, we're in this sort of hopelessness and despair uh, state as well. Uh, we're sort of combined in the two of those right now. And then, uh, you know, eventually we're getting into the uh, more of this global village and harmonization and things you see with the sustainable development goals and the work of some, some of the people in the room here. Uh, the, you know, it's really starting to show some hopefulness and, and uh, some action, and then hopefully that will lead us to uh, a more sustainable world uh, over, time, over time. I thought it was a great summary and it's sort of a, a good way of thinking about how we progressed uh, and, that, uh, and how uh, uh, you know, we start to think about how enterprises sort of operate within, within those industrial age and information age and this global village and then this sustainable world as well. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, there's uh, quite a few authors on it uh, 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 that uh, wrote this book. There's this, this, I think I mentioned earlier, there's a spiritual side that comes out a little bit in this book as well. Um, I, haven't, I haven't read this cover to cover this one, but uh, I'm sort of just uh, with the key, key points. I uh, uh, actually got a lot out of uh, uh, David Cooperwriter's afterward in the, in the back of the book. And then uh, just talk a little bit about flourishing enterprises. So it's sort of the, the new spirit of business, focus on thriving, flourishing, and improving well-being outcomes. I always, uh, uh, I always think in terms of, uh, uh, and I always add another word uh, there's, uh, before this, which is because positive psychology also worries about uh, uh, survive, surviving as well. So even though I, you know, I said we focus on the wellness continuum, we, you know, we still we still support that things that happen in the illness side of the wellness continuum. Uh, the, uh, and uh, you know, may, uh, uh, really Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, the very base, the basics thing. So there's surviving, there's thriving, flourishing, and then there's improved well-being outcomes. Those are sort of the four words that I use. And anything that uh, sort of I look at, I, I do work in, uh, I do work in uh, human rights learning as well as uh, the positive psychology world. and. Uh, uh, so a lot, a lot of people, uh, uh, in order to survive, give up their rights, and so that's why I like to have survive, surviving in the in in the definition. I, I didn't put it in here because it, it wasn't in anything that I've seen from other people yet. So it's, uh, uh, but anyways, uh, and then how we use the word thriving, flourishing, and improve well-being outcomes. There's uh, different uh, uh, diff people use those words uh, differently. I kind of, uh, and I'm probably using it incorrectly, but I like the thriving word more to be on the, uh, uh, just thriving on a day-to-day -day basis and then flourishing over time and then ultimately having improved well-being outcomes. But I've seen all kinds of different definitions. It's another one where interpret it the way you need to interpret it and, uh, uh, the, and how it's the most meaningful for you. Uh, but for, for me, I, I, those are the four key words that I always, uh, surviving, thriving, flourishing, and improved well-being outcomes. So uh, the uh, again the context starts to come through on the def. This is uh, 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 you know, some of the papers. There's individual flourishing, there's business flourishing, and there's a flourishing world. So individual flourishing is more around the individual's well-being. Business flourishing is around uh, creating sustainable sustainable value. Uh, again, some of these uh, again we could we could debate some of this for uh, some of the wording for quite a while. And then the flourishing world is really a healthy whole, whole system perspective. And so a lot of the, the, the a lot of these things I mentioned earlier that are contributing to uh, um, sort of uh, positive organizations and uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, integrating positive organization, positive psychology with organizational design, uh, design and development is that uh, you know, this whole system and society view the why, how, and the what, the multidisciplinary, the collaborative co-design, the positive lens, the positive core, being generative, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, a lot of times we throw around the word positive, but it's, it's uh, generative might be a better, a better word to use. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, but uh, in my role, I'll stick with the word positive and, and throw in generative when I need it. Strengths-based is a huge, uh, you know, we're seeing that as being sort of the key, the key piece of, uh, 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 and how positive psychology is uh, uh, the research and, uh, and interventions and practices 
related to strengths, uh, the strength side are, are really uh, powerful tools for, for what, uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about today. Design thinking approach to an agile open this transformation. There's, there's all, all kinds of words. Uh, you can, and this, uh, I always liked, I liked uh, sort of this uh, information. This comes from uh, uh, Cooper, primarily uh, Cooper Eider and Miles uh, The uh, you know, flourishing enterprise is about people being inspired every day and bringing their whole and best selves. You'll hear that in positive psychology. We always talk about bringing your, your best selves forward, but your whole and best selves to work. It's about innovation arising from, uh, uh, from everywhere in the organization. It's about realizing remarkable relationship value just relational capital and what that's really worth is, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, uh, for a flourishing enterprise is it's, it's such an important point. So relationships between the uh, stakeholders, the customers, employees, communities, and the biosphere is even as a, as a stakeholder. People would debate that terminology sometimes. Uh, to create an unprecedented uh, doing good and doing well. Uh, and where, people, where business can excel, people can flourish, and nature can thrive. So this, this is, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, using words flourish and thrive in a slightly different way, but that, this one works for me. <laughs> you know, uh, that's sort of a, a very uh, nice way of saying it. It's uh, something every leader wants to do or should want to do and uh, uh, I'm conscious that everything is connected as well. And there can be no flourishing in here without flourishing out there. So in, in positive psychology and uh, organizational design, we have this idea of uh, outside in, so inside out and outside in. So we'll look at the impacts, impacts that positive psychology from the inside out, uh, you know, with the individuals and teams in the organization, and then what the organization does and how it, and the external forces on on the organization and how that can influence uh, the teams and the individuals inside. Uh, uh, this diagram sort of is a great summary. It's uh, sort of flourishing human beings and flourishing enterprise and the flourishing world. And it sort of gives us sort of uh, how they sort of all sort of are connected to each other. Um, and then having all the stakeholders involved uh, and that bigger definition of, of flourishing. So that's the full spectrum of flourishing. And then they, uh, they also have a, uh, use another term called mirror flourishing, which is, uh, it's really, uh, uh, it's flourishing from both uh, and I said inside out and outside in. Well, it's really sort of looking at flourishing from, from uh, uh, going both ways. And uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, a lot of times we've sort of focused on flourishing individuals and hopefully that'll get us to flourishing enterprise. Hopefully that'll get us to a flourishing world. And what David uh, Cooper writer and Ronald Fry talk about is, well, me, uh, and I think they've got a graduate student. I can't remember the name of the graduate student that's working on this uh, as well, but, um, uh, they're saying for a normal, uh, whatever a normal enterprise really means, it's uh, uh, the, it, it might be better to say abnormal enterprise. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, uh, but they're, what they're suggesting is that uh, go to the focus on flourishing world. Just, you know, like focus on uh, uh, the, the, the bigger picture, the whole, the, the, the big picture, the, uh, uh, the big contribution. And, and uh, you know, that's really where the, the sustainable development goals focus on. On, on that, if uh, uh, you know, and then from an organizational point of view, get the organization to be flourishing first, and then that will draw. Uh, sorry, get the world to be flourishing first, and and just the you know going in that direction from an enterprise point of view will will actually force the, the enterprise to become more flourishing itself, and, and the, the enterprise becomes more flourishing, the individuals become more flourishing, and so it's you're sort of getting a flourishing coming from both sides. And so that, that, that mirror word, um, um, that's there. So that's my interpretation of mirror flourishing. It's, uh, it's uh, if anyone else wants to add anything to that, so feel free. Uh, I want to talk a lot about sustainable value creation. Uh, the, uh, I, I think I showed that in, the, in one of the previous slides, but really sustainable value creation and shared well-being will reinforce one another. That's, that's the key point uh, for that. Flourishing enterprise, there's different levels. I'm going to skip over this one because, uh, are we down at four? Uh, you've got another 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to skip over that one. And if uh, you take some questions, then you need some time for that. Yeah, okay. The, uh, I did want, this again is taking from Anthony and Stephen Davies' work. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about flourishing enterprise strategy design since 
that's really what we're looking at eventually. How do we get positive psychology into part of that design process? And, uh, uh, you know, so I, I'm not going to steal uh, Anthony's uh, thunder on this, other than uh, Anthony and Stephen have come up with a method. Uh, it's really uh, looks at, uh, you know, appreciate and define success. And then, uh, uh, you know, you can uh, back cast and you can look at your, your baseline current state from a business modeling point of view. Uh, using the flourishing business model canvas and other other tools uh, or, or concepts and then you can uh, you know, uh, back back cast into various states and, and uh, plot, you know do your do your business models for those states uh, and then create solutions uh, from that and then get down to actually building building those solutions can i leave it at that anthony for now sounds good okay <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, for all of it, all of that is uh, the flourishing business canvas. So, uh, this is this is my next step: is to sort of think about uh, uh, the design method and the canvas, and then how can we actually start to bring in uh, positive psychology uh, concepts, uh, uh, um, practices, uh, research, uh, interventions, and assessment tools to sort of support some of this. So it's. Uh, it's super early on, on this, but that's where I'm trying to get to next. And uh, uh, it's just that this this whole this whole area is, is huge. This could be uh, I could I could actually make a career of trying to link positive psychology, organization design, and flourishing uh, flourishing business design. Uh, uh, and I may do that. <laughs> the uh, so uh, one of the, my next steps is to sort of look at. I'm not going to go through these slides. Uh, um, a lot of you have seen this, this these ideas anyways. Uh, they, these are this, just describing the questions you're asking related to the canvas. So I wanted to get to the science of uh, positive XORG, which is emerging, emerging the science of positive psychology, positive organizational scholarship, positive organization behavior, and organizational design, and a few other things probably. I talked about that slide already. I just wanted to talk about V a little bit. So uh, just to give you a feel of the topic area, topic areas in positive psychology and what, what we can actually uh, start, to, uh, uh, start to bring, uh, uh, br uh, start to uh, sort of link to uh, uh, the organization, the enterprise, uh, well, to all the contexts which, which make up an enterprise uh, as well. So positivity, you know, there's really uh, uh, positivity as a, as a way of uh, a pathway to flourishing. There's positive affect, positive emotions. Uh, there's uh, uh, in positive emotions. There's uh, a broaden and build theory. So as you get, as you have more positive emotions, and uh, uh, the, the goal is to have uh, you know, considerably more positive emotions to negative emotions within a, within your within your day, within your, your your teams, within your organizations over time, and uh, as you as you have more of those, then you become more open and you, you broaden your, your, your perspective and, uh, and you build a collection of tools that you can use to actually improve you know, your positive emotions for the individual, for the team, the organization, uh, the community and beyond. So it's, uh, uh, so it's, it's a pretty big area There's positive neuroscience. There's, you know, there's uh, interventions like gratitude and uh, there's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. You know, when, you, when you're working with individuals or teams, it's, uh, you, you want to sort of uh, try to get people to be more, in more of a growth mindset uh, perspective instead of a fixed mindset. Uh, there's resilience, there's optimism. I could go on on this list forever. Um, uh, but those are just to give you a typical feel for you know, in the PERMA V, the, po the positivity or positive emotion side. Bill, yeah? um, could, could you put a link to where we can learn more about this topic? Um, what's coming up for, for me and I think on Dean as well is we're doing quite a lot of work around competency development for entrepreneurs to enable them to do uh, to flourish themselves personally so that's a, an individual level but also of course for their organization to flourish yeah. um, and uh, it, it strikes me that these uh, topics are directly related to competencies that we need to help the entrepreneurs develop um, so I'm, I'm curious for just a link to learn more about this. And then secondly, do you know of anybody who's been doing some uh, competency development or, you know, been developing a 
competency framework, you know, maybe with different levels of proficiency in each of these already defined, with ways you can test for them or uh, from, uh, enable people to develop those, uh, improve proficiency at these competencies? Yeah, I can, I can point you to a guy that's done a lot of work in that area. It's uh, Jay Coker is his name, and uh, he's, uh, he used to be at the University of Chicago. Or I think he was a uh, uh, famous uh, Adler University in Chicago. And uh, he introduced to me to the idea of competency models, and uh, and uh, he's on he's on my I have a group of uh, of uh, uh, PhD types that are uh, uh, there's we're we're trying to uh, develop a, a portion of Biz Monday. Uh, uh, I want it to become a research. Uh, I want Biz Monday to become a research applied research and uh, consult consultancy and advisory company. So it's uh, similar to the Gartner Group, except in the field of the could, could you just put in the Skype chat the, that person's name, the organization's name? I, I can, I'll, I'll give you the, I'll give you, uh, uh, Jay. I mean, it, it, it seems, it seems to me that, you know, this, this is where the, 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 uh, the rubber hits the road in, in many respects because this is the whether you're inside an established organization and you're looking to take the, the, the people in that organization and enable them to um, enable them to, to, to move towards flourishing themselves or if you're an entrepreneur trying to start an organization which you want that possibly to exist for yourself and other people it seems to me these are the these are the topics you have to be thinking about you know moment to moment almost yeah yeah, this is uh, um, uh, this is pretty. This isn't even everything. This is like still a partial list. Uh, well, remember, at the very beginning of the talk, I said I wanted to create a sort of a, a um, vocabulary or taxonomy of, of all all of the possible positive psychology concepts and terms and uh, practices, interventions, and uh, and this this is sort of a, a reasonable a reasonable start at sort of some of the areas, but it, it's very this is still pretty shallow, so it's uh, uh, the uh, um, you know there's a lot there's a lot lot more to come, and then they're not just necessary. It's not necessary. To, uh, the guide made these look a little linear, but they're they're actually hierarchical. They're networked, and they're they're all related to each other. So you know you, you have to build you have to sort of uh, uh, sort of take that network perspective as well, and uh, how how these things fit together and support each other. So uh, again, I'm not going to go through the whole the whole slide, but um, uh, just in get engagement is really, you know, talking about how it supports flourishing and self-regulation and flow and the peak performance under their strengths is a, a big part of, uh, of positive psychology. It's, it's probably the number one area. For, when you go into an organization, uh, it's probably, if you're trying to get in there to uh, uh, improve things for the organization, I think uh, 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 strengths is, a, is probably the, the, the place to start um, uh, and have the most success. The, uh, some engagement looks at decision making and uh, choice uh, as well. Um, relationships, so just again, uh, foundations of thriving relationships. High quality connections is the term that they use in positive psychology, so which is right there. Um, positive, uh, we look at uh, appreciative acquire, we stick under relationship. Well, it's, it's much bigger than relationships, but uh, a strong piece, a big piece of uh, appreciative inquiry is, is about. Uh, uh, relationships that you build uh, when you're going through that uh, consulting process. Uh, the uh, kindness and altruism, love. You know, it's uh, soft. These soft topics. You know, a lot of businesses kind of tend to uh, back away from. But uh, uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately, it comes down, it comes down to these things, and uh, you know, and, and people being able to talk about you know, love from a from a you know from a, a business perspective and. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, there's so many different types of love sort of thing. So, uh, but, it, it, you know, I, I tend to avoid this one as well, but it keeps coming back to me. It's just, uh, you know, it comes back in, in, in the business world as well. Uh, so social networks and contagion, social emotional relationships. Like I talked about trust already. Uh, then meaning, meaning is really a purpose, passion and meaning. Uh, your job, your calling, there's job crafting is a big area right now uh, within organizations. So. You know, a lot of that comes out of uh, positive psychology's contribution to uh, uh, HR and organizational design, um, awe and elevation, 
you know, on the achievement side. But yeah, this, I'll just skip over that. The vitality one I'll just talk about just because it's a little bit different. So it's pathways to flourishing, psychosomatic and, and somatic psychic relationships. So how the mind controls the body and the body controls uh, the mind, uh, stress and calm in, in the nervous system, how that, uh, uh, how that uh, sort of works and how you can deal with it. You know, sleep, you know, you're here, Ariana Huffington, always talking about sleep now within, with, uh, you know, for individuals, but and then having some organizations having sort of sleeping areas within the, within the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the buildings and that, and, uh, uh, just to ensure people to get, allow them to nap during the day, uh, or exercise, you know, the same thing from an exercise or physical activity point of view, uh, the um, uh, nutrition and diet, mind and body, uh, aging is an area, I'm, interested, I'm really interested in positive aging, and so, uh, uh, but uh, even within organizations, you know, as people get to the mid-career and the age within the mid-career, their, their needs of the organization and, and how they operate within the organization changes. And then when you get to older workers, the same, the same things happen. So, you, you know, a positive aging is an important area to look at within, within the enterprise as well. Uh, I put this a copy. This is a great book. If you, it's a very expensive book as well. I think it was about one hundred eighty-five dollars. But uh, uh, the psychology of pos positivity and strength-based approaches at work. Very focused on the uh, on uh, the at work environment, and it talks about individual approaches and organizational approaches. There's even a, there's a third part that actually looks at uh, approaches that are specific to the sector that you work in as well. So it's uh, I didn't put that on there. But uh, you know, just a few examples for the individual approaches: positivity, which uh, you know we talked we talked about earlier, uh, psychological strengths, uh, which we'll get into a little bit, hope, uh, creating meaning and purpose. Uh, we got ten minutes left, so uh, I'm going to uh, leave it at that. Uh, so on the organizational side, uh, positive approaches to organizational change, uh, approaches to leadership development, employee engagement, job crafting. Uh, I mentioned some assessments for, there's all kinds of assessments for the workplace. Uh, in positive psychology, uh, the first area that, uh, that came, I think it was 2001 or 2003, after the field was uh, uh, sort of came about, was uh, uh, positive organization scholarship became, uh, became a, a subfield as well. Within, and so it's an umbrella, umbrella concept, it's a positive lens uh, on, the, uh, on the organization. Uh, the, uh, the, the organization, the positive processes and states that occur associated with organizational context. And scholarship is pursuing a rigorous and, and systematic and theory based, so research based is what they're trying to say. So it's uh, uh, that uh, Kim Cameron is probably the biggest name uh, in that group, and Jane Dutton and Robert, I guess Robert Quinn would compete with Kim Cameron as well. So uh, those are two great books to, uh, to look at. Uh, you know, out of everything that I sort of looked at, uh, that first, this book here was probably the, the it's the most up, uh, most recent, and it's probably the, the biggest, the, the greatest picture. Uh, but certainly, the handbook has got a lot covers a lot of areas. So, the, you know, the key areas are individual attributes of positive individual attributes, emotions, strengths, and virtues. Um, there's a whole bunch of other books around uh, positive organizations. So, this is a good read. The Robert Quinn's book, uh, it's a pretty quick read as well. Um, um, Psychological capital, which I haven't really gotten into, and we won't have time to talk about it today, but uh, uh, it's in here. Positive, positive organizations, this gives you sort of the characteristics of positive organizations. You know, really these uh, first 10 are, are the primary focus. Uh, and again, unfortunately, since we're running out of time, I'm, uh, you guys will be shocked when you realize how many slides we've got to, look, to go. <laughs> Uh, positive organization behavior is a little bit different. It, it came uh, close to the same time as uh, positive organization scholarship, but it's all about positively oriented human resource strengths and psychological capacities that can be measured. So that was the big difference was, you know, a lot of the other stuff was research-based and they didn't focus on the measurement side, but this, this, this area focused on the measurement side and they called it psychological capital. Uh, so it can be measured, it can be de developed and effectively managed for performance improvement. So there's all kinds of uh, research and pra uh, practices and interventions that can actually improve the psychological capital of individuals and teams um, within, uh, within the organization. Uh, the, 
skip over some of this. Uh, Bill, if you would, of, of those two books, if, if there was one that, that has practical tools for measurement and assessment, is, is one of those better than the other? Yeah, it's a tough call because uh, really this, uh, the, the one on the right is, uh, is a newer version. But what they've done is they've expanded what psych uh, the areas of psychological capital. So uh, uh, you can actually probably, you might want to do a search first on, on, uh, on the web for psychological capital and measurement of. And uh, uh, there, I think there's, uh, there should be a few articles. Uh, I'm not sure if they're all free, but uh, and I know I've got, I've got some, I'll, I'll dig around, I've got some of them. But, uh, uh, and there is, a, they, there is a technique that they have for measuring all of that as well. They're, they actually have an assessment tool for psychological capital as well. Let me just scan through here and uh, this one, oh yeah. In the second book that was on the right, the lighter colored one, uh, the psychological capital version two. Uh, so in the in version one, psychological capital is really based on hope, realistic optimism, self-efficacy or confidence, or confidence and resiliency. So they, they actually assess employees uh, based on that. Uh, based on those areas, and you can sort of see some of the de de developmental dimensions uh, that go into those. So they've actually got an assessment tool and a measurement tool for doing that. But what they're doing in the new in the new book is they're starting to broaden the definition of psychological capital to include creativity, flow, mindfulness, gratitude, forgiveness, emotional intelligence. I'm not sure how watered it down it gets and how measurable it still is, but uh, that's where they're trying to go right now. So, so Bill, recognizing we've just got a, a few moments to, to go, and, and as, as you promised, you, you've done a great job of giving us a survey of the field and a sense of the, the connection between the way that we've been thinking about strong sustainability uh, and, and positive psychology. Um, where, where should we go next? Well, the, I know from this, uh, my area of interest in this area, in this, uh, let me think where you put. Uh, your question is, where should you go if you want to know more, or where do I think we're going to go next with this? Well, it, 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 it seems to me that the, the business model focus that we've had, the design focus that we've had, is potentially extremely complementary to the organizational psychology perspective. And, uh, you know, we've had a few articles that have started to highlight this. But, but where do we go practically next? I mean, yeah. You're, you're a bridge between these two worlds, so is uh, Claire, uh, because of the connection to David. But what do we do in practice to try and... Well, we have a big, we have a big gap right now, and I, I kind of hinted at these at my, on my first slide or uh, third slide or whatever. But for me, the next steps really are further exploration. This is like, I've, I've just done a, you know, I've done a pretty detailed exploration, but there's still a long way to go. And, and so there's a, a more exploration, there's more meta-analysis of the work that's been done out there on how positive psychology uh, sort of uh, concepts and research and uh, practices and interventions and assessment tools uh, link to organization, all those uh, needs that the organization had and link to sort of larger, uh, higher level flourishing and all of that. So that's what I, I, I want to take that on as a personal challenge for the work that I do. Uh, but uh, you know, this is this is not. Uh, you know, it's still a large effort to to go about, and it needs to be a group of people going about this as well. So, you know, I think uh, I, I, you know you, you you know Anthony. I've got another sort of nonprofit uh, initiative called Well Monday, which uh, supports the Biz Monday work. And so I'm thinking that I might be able to do it through a combination of those two, uh, or attempt to do it through. Uh, we want to create a community for positive organizations within the CPPA as well. So, uh, so we could actually start to do it uh, through uh, through that group as well. Uh, so there's that. The uh, build a thorough taxonomy of positive psychology, uh, organization design concepts and practice. I talked about that. Start to build that logic model. I, I want to know how all the link, how everything links, and it's a very complex logic model. You know, even within a field, then looking at the uh, between fields as well. So it's uh, a lot of work there. And then uh, the last piece, which is, you know, I would have loved if, if I was a, if I was a genius and I could think about this all the time, uh, then I would I would love to uh, figure out how to link uh, uh, link to business modeling and, uh, and business architecture 
uh, and the flourishing business design methods uh, in, the, in the campus as well. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm, I've sort of got a, a set of notes that I'm working on as far as the linkages, the link possible linkages between uh, uh, business modeling, business architecture, flourishing business design methods and the campus, the campus. Uh, but it's, it's still really early. So it's, uh, uh, so that's for me, that's what the, 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 the next steps are. But for, uh, uh, I think for yourselves, uh, you know, the, the presentation is huge compared to what you guys saw. Um, uh, the, uh, so, so Bill, we're, we're, we, we want to keep to our, our, our time and, and what you've done here has given us an incredible resource to, to yeah. delve through in, in more detail. Um, maybe I can close with an invitation. Um, given the depth of uh, synergies and, and obvious leverage between these two perspectives on the same thing that this group has taken and the the CPPA has taken. Uh, I, I'd be really keen to have uh, you bring back to us uh, some colleagues from the CPPA focused on that organizational uh, space that maybe can go deeper, you know, spend a, one of our meetings going deeper into just one of these areas. You know, maybe it's, it's the measurement approach, maybe it's the, the uh, you know, what are the antecedents of, of these um, outcomes? Uh, that we need to be thinking about building into our business models. Um, we, we've got, you know, a, a whole bunch of people in this group who are, uh, who are B Corps, either leading B Corps or in the movement. And so this, if we can get down to practical advice, um, that would be of, of great value to, uh, uh, to, to folks here. So, um, yeah, I, I think maybe we close with that, that invitation. Yeah, for sure. I uh, like I, I I've got I've got a uh, uh, and I think uh, Don you're Don you're involved in the IPPA right yeah so uh, there's potential to sort of uh, get uh, you know we can look at ourselves and some other people look at the International Positive Psychology Association they they have a positive organization uh, subgroup as well or committee and then uh, and then we're just in the process of creating one for the CPPA we haven't announced that yet. And, I actually might leave that, uh, although uh, uh, if there's any other, anybody else that's interested, so that I don't mind not being the lead of it. So it's, uh, um, and then, so I think uh, through a combination of all of those, we, uh, and then uh, and certainly the SSP, BMG, or uh, one of the, you know, whether it's flourishing enterprise or flourishing business, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, those, those sort of in, uh, initiatives, then uh, we could certainly make that happen. And then um, I can, you know, I can even look at it from the point of view of creating a special, uh, a special workshop uh, on it in Toronto uh, through the CPPA, you know, to develop these ideas further. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I think that would be very interesting. So, so keep, keep when when things happen in the CPPA, IPPA world that are relevant, then please make sure somebody posts them to the LinkedIn group, and hopefully, once when LinkedIn fixes all the things they just broke in the groups, it'd be useful. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be, like I'll be doing the same thing for my my, my larger vision for Canadian, uh, Canadian well-being. You know, I've got quite a few uh, researchers that are interested in participating in that as well, and uh, we want to get all levels of government involved. And, you know, uh, we're even toying around with the idea of a sort of a commission or a, a commission on uh, Canadian well uh, Canadian well-being. Uh, that that comes from uh, Bob Dollar and who's out of uh, University of Montreal or Sherbrooke. I think it's uh, or Quebec, or I'm not, I can't remember, but uh, he's sort of the, the worldwide expert on passion and uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, harmonious passion and obsessive passion. And that. So but he's, uh, he was very keen on participating and being involved. So he might, uh, he might want to be involved and certainly the IPPA might want to be involved. Too. Right. So, so, so Bill, we, we, we're now past, past our time. So I'm going to uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to build this deck because I can see that the the, the, the references in here are going to be very useful to, to a lot of us uh, in, in our work going forward. And um, as I said, uh, we'd love, love to invite you to come back with colleagues from the CPPA uh, and others uh, to go deeper on this. So the, the door is open, your, your choice is when you choose to walk through it. Um, we are taking, just to let everybody know, we are taking bookings now 
uh, for June and July next year. Uh, we've got pretty much the calendar sorted out between now and then. And Nicole uh, will be posting a, an update message to let you know what's coming up uh, in the coming months. But I will say next month, uh, we have uh, one of this group's longtime members, Dr. Florian Ludek Freud, uh, who will be presenting on his latest work, uh, which many of the groups have been, and members have also been involved with helping him with on patterns of sustainable business models. Uh, so this has uh, just been published now in the Peer Review Press and uh, uh, looking forward to getting a, a, a good introduction to that work um, next month. So uh, same, uh, same place, same channel uh, in uh, a month's time, second Tuesday of, uh, of November. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Have a, a, a good uh, rest of your day, wherever you are. Thanks, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, thanks, all. There's some questions here that we'll...